Romania, a nation brimming with potential, finds itself grappling with a persistent shadow, foreign company corruption. From shadowy deals to opaque ownership structures, whispers of malpractice linger, casting doubt on the country's progress. But is Romania truly fertile ground for such illicit activity, or are these mere whispers fueled by speculation and misunderstanding? This is what we'll discuss in today's video. In 2007, Romania joined the European Union. Back then, it was one of the poorest and most corrupt countries in the group. Sadly, corruption has stuck around like a ghost in the country. Until 2022, Austria and the Netherlands stopped Romania, along with Bulgaria, from joining the Schengen Agreement. They thought Romania wasn't doing enough to fight corruption. In 2022, Dutch leaders said that corruption and crime in Bulgaria and Romania could be a danger to the security of the Netherlands and the whole Schengen area. Even though the Netherlands has now agreed for Romania to join, the Austrian government still worries about corruption. This is because Romania and Bulgaria have the lowest ranks among EU countries in the Corruption Perception Index, which comes out every year from Transparency International. But there seems to be a political side to this from Austria. Romania's scores aren't much different from Hungary and Greece, who are both in the Schengen area for a long time now. Still, Romania isn't given the OK. Certainly, corruption is a problem in Romania, but a big issue is foreign companies being corrupt there, breaking the rules. Let's look at Austrian companies as an example. One example is the situation with OMV Petrum, an Austrian oil and gas company. In 2014, the European Commission fined OMV Petrom 97 million euros for misusing its strong position in the Romanian market. This included unfair practices like setting prices and dividing the market with anti-competitive actions. Another case involves Telecom Austria, an Austrian telecommunications company. In 2013, the Romanian Competition Council fined Telecom Austria 73 million euros for misusing its strong position in the Romanian mobile market. They engaged in anti-competitive practices such as charging too much and using predatory pricing. Additionally, in 2018, the Austrian construction company Strabag faced criticism from the then-Romanian Minister of Transport. Strabag won a big project in 2018 worth 700 million euros to modernize two railway sections on the Pan-European Corridor 4. However, the company's commitment was questioned as it didn't submit letters guaranteeing good performance on time. Romanian Minister of Transport Lucian Sova expressed unhappiness, saying that big foreign companies' progress in infrastructure works was poor. He didn't even see an excavator with the brand of the multinational corporation. The Romanian Minister of Transport also mentioned a case in 2010 when the famous Austrian company Strabag didn't submit a letter of good performance guarantee for a 188-kilometer road modernization. This project was given to a group led by Strabag and two other Romanian companies. It seems that problems with the company's involvement in transport projects happen not only in Romania, but also in Austria. Reports showed that Strawback confirmed being under an anti-corruption investigation led by the Austrian Public Prosecutor's Office for Combating Economic Crimes and Corruption. The investigation relates to road projects in the Austrian provinces of Carinthia and Styria, as well as highway rehabilitation from 2008 to 2014. In Serbia, Strawbag was suspected of lobby abuse after hiring an agency to win various railway modernization tenders. There are also more instances worth mentioning. HS Timber, the biggest timber processor in Eastern Europe, was involved in a controversial practice with its Romanian suppliers for over a decade. The Austrian company insisted that its Romanian partners provide logs at least 10 centimeters longer than officially documented. This practice, known as overlength, allowed HS Timber to accumulate a lot of wood not officially declared, potentially reaching 1.6 million cubic meters, valued at about $34 million. Even though they're trying inside, corruption still hangs around in Romania. According to a report from GAN Integrity about risks in Romania, companies dealing with the courts there face a high chance of corruption. People often give bribes and make shady payments to get favorable court decisions. Even though Romania's courts are supposed to be independent, they often feel the heat from the government. Sometimes judges even get in trouble for taking bribes and influencing decisions. The report also says that when people were asked, they ranked the police force as one of Romania's most corrupt institutions. But in the face of these problems, Romania has taken steps to fight corruption. In recent years, Romania's ranking has gone up a bit, from 70th in 2019 to 69th in 2020, with a score of 44 in both years. A report from 2014 by the EU on anti-corruption says 57% of Romanians felt personally affected by corruption. 
people and the government have tried to make a difference too. In 2017, there were big protests across Romania against corruption. It all started because the government wanted to make certain corruption crimes not as serious. The proposed change could have helped politicians facing corruption charges like Liviu Dragni, the leader of the Social Democratic Party at the time. The protests were so strong that the government had to take back the plan in February 2017. Liviu Dragni, who couldn't be the prime minister because of a fraud conviction, could have gained from the cancelled plan. The fallout from the protests led to the removal of Prime Minister Soren Grindianu in June 2017, replaced by Mihai Tudos. These events showed that there were big political tensions inside the Social Democratic Party. During all this, the National Anti-Corruption Directorate, led by Chief Prosecutor Laura Codruda Covesi, played a big role in fighting corruption. The protests showed how people were fed up with corruption in the government. In 2018, Justice Minister Tudorel Toder fired Chief Prosecutor Laura Codruda Covesi, which made people even more unhappy. Many saw this as a step back in the fight against corruption in Romania. The events of 2017 and what happened afterward marked a big moment in Romania's push for honesty and responsibility in its government. This tells us that Romanians see corruption as a problem, and there's still work to do. Romania's fight against corruption, particularly within sutra firms, necessitates a multifaceted approach that addresses both the root causes and the existing structures that enable corrupt practices. Romania can enhance its legal framework by implementing stricter anti-corruption laws, including provisions for increased penalties for bribery, money laundering, and abuse of power. Closing loopholes and ensuring effective enforcement mechanisms is crucial. Additionally, fostering a culture of transparency through robust freedom of information laws and proactive disclosure of public data is essential. Empowering citizens to hold public officials and businesses accountable is a key aspect of this effort. Establishing robust whistleblower protection mechanisms that safeguard individuals reporting corruption and ensuring thorough investigations into whistleblower claims are vital steps. The country should uphold the independence and impartiality of the judiciary, free from political or economic influence. Investing in judicial training and resources to ensure efficient and effective prosecution of corruption cases is imperative. Strengthening law enforcement agencies by providing adequate training, resources, and operational autonomy to investigate and prosecute corruption effectively is crucial. And addressing corruption within law enforcement through robust internal oversight mechanisms is equally important. Not to mention empowering anti-corruption agencies with the necessary authority, resources, and independence to carry out their mandates transparently is a priority. Romania can implement stricter regulations and oversight mechanisms for suture firms, particularly in corruption-prone areas such as procurement, licensing, and permit issuance. Regular inspections and audits can help identify and address irregularities. Requiring suture firms to disclose their beneficial ownership structures publicly would facilitate the identification of potential conflicts of interest and the tracking of funds. Promoting good corporate governance practices within suture firms, including independent boards, effective internal controls, and anti-corruption compliance programs is essential. Also raising public awareness about the negative consequences of corruption and empowering citizens to participate in anti-corruption efforts is crucial. Supporting civil society organizations working on transparency and accountability initiatives is also important. Then, encouraging the private sector to adopt anti-corruption compliance programs and ethical business practices, as well as partnering with businesses to develop and implement collective action initiatives against corruption are key steps. Finally, integrating anti-corruption education into school curricula and professional training programs can foster a culture of integrity and ethical behavior. Combating corruption requires addressing underlying factors such as poverty, inequality, and weak rule of law. Investing in social development programs and promoting inclusive economic growth is essential. Collaborating with international partners and organizations to share best practices, exchange information, and coordinate efforts is important for effective anti-corruption measures. And regularly monitoring and evaluating the effectiveness of these measures and making adjustments as needed while ensuring transparency and accountability in the monitoring process are vital components of the overall strategy. In conclusion, Romania faces a persistent challenge in combating corruption, particularly within its legal, institutional, and corporate frameworks. While the country has implemented various measures to strengthen its anti-corruption efforts, issues such as judicial independence, law enforcement capacity, and regulatory oversight for certain firms continue to pose significant obstacles. Efforts to address corruption have included legal reforms, whistleblower protection, and enhanced transparency measures. 
But despite internal strides, corruption risks remain high, with reports indicating bribery and irregular payments influencing court decisions and a perceived lack of transparency in institutions. By that, we've reached the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video as well, and we'll see you in the next video.